Council of One transmission. The 2016 U.S. election from a fifth dimensional perspective. November 13th, 2016, through Susanna Redelfs. We are the Council of One, and we have been asked to comment on the 2016 election. This is the first time such information has been requested of us. We remind you that as a group, our focus is on healing and the evolution of all consciousness, and so our response will necessarily reflect that orientation. As with every transmission received from any source on any dimension, please use your own discernment to filter all information received. If it resonates with you, it is yours. If it does not, feel free to discard it. We would ask that you allow all that we transmit to stimulate your insights so that you may better understand that which is true for you in this moment. First of all, we will digress to discuss chaos nodes. We have given many transmissions on this subject prior to this, and so will be brief. Those of you who are familiar with this information may skip it. A chaos node describes a time period when there are a significantly greater number of mergers and or splits of parallel universes than usual. Historically speaking, there have been relatively few of them, as they are only required when there is an inflection point that shifts the trajectory of life on Earth, whether in a biological or global civilizational sense. At this time, the chaos nodes are marking an inflection point in both arenas. In 2012, there was a year-long chaos node which marked the first time in the current cycle that there were more mature souls incarnating than any other soul age. From 2014 to 2024, these chaos nodes will continue for half of each year, roughly from June to December, the summer and winter solstices, depending on which hemisphere you inhabit. This pattern of occurrence will accomplish the acceleration of your historical timeline. They are predominantly, but not exclusively, merging parallel universes. This acts to compress and concentrate all of the energy of the collapsing parallels into relatively few. This provides the fuel for the acceleration through what we have termed a historical singularity. We have said before, and will now repeat, that your presidential election was held during this year's chaos node. We are aware that there are many who are going through some kind of emotional upheaval in response to the election of Donald Trump. Even those who may have supported and voted for him may now be feeling a sense of unease and disquiet because he represents an unknown quantity in the arena of American politics. Very little yet can be perceived concerning his likely actions and their probable results. We would like to offer a broader context on current events. From our perspective, the chaos nodes accelerated the arrival of conditions that were already bound to occur at some point, given current geopolitical trends and the results of past collective choice in your group of parallels. If it had not been this year, it would have been in four years. If not Trump, someone very much like him. As your planet is already feeling the effects of changing climate, even if on a personality level an individual might reject the reality of climate change, the human population is moving itself in response, much as plant and animal species are shifting their locations through migration. This is already bringing pressure to bear on the traditional borders of modern countries and will eventually lead to the dissolution of nation states altogether. This influx of migrating humans and the environmental pressure of changing planetary conditions has, in turn, applied pressure to human societies. 
It has offered choices in how communities absorb and cope with this shifting population. The response to these choices will in turn determine the kind of politics and socioeconomics a country will enact, both internally and in regards to their relationship with other nations. Through globalizing economies and rapid development of technology, goods and knowledge are shared with a depth and breadth not formerly experienced by human societies. Much as territorial borders are being pressured, so are cultural borders, and this has generated a friction that has resulted in many countries seeing the rise of more nationalistic and authoritarian forces affecting their political expression. To a certain extent, this has always occurred throughout known human history, but never before on such a scale. Never before has there been such a high human population on the planet living in such densities. A global population of over 7 billion living humans, all exercising their free will, all generating the spin-off of parallel universes through their choices, has an accelerating effect on the rate of change as experienced by everyone currently alive. This leads also to the subjective perception that time itself is accelerating. There is validity to this perception. In every possible sense of the word, the current population is living through an unprecedented time in human history. This era is providing a wealth of opportunities for evolution on all levels. We have previously offered the metaphor that Earth is a school where students of all grade levels attend to their lessons in the same classroom. The different levels of curriculum are what we and other causal, fifth dimensional entities, model as soul age. While the essence is eternal in every sense that you would understand, it is useful when engaging in a cycle of incarnations on a planet to organize the lessons. Information on soul ages is abundantly available elsewhere. We will only remind you here that the planet now has more mature souls incarnating than any other soul age. Therefore, Earth is now considered a mature soul planet. Young souls have been the dominating force on planetary history for roughly the last 2,000 years. The young souls on the planet, who have been able to have things their way for two millennia, will not relinquish their dominance quietly or without resistance. It is not in the nature of that soul age to do so. While it has been channeled before that the planet would remain young soul for another few centuries, that is no longer true in the current trajectory of parallels. When it was understood that a greater effort would have to be made collectively so that Earth could remain suitable for human and cetacean incarnation, Earth collectively decided to accelerate the soul age transition and the chaos nodes are enabling that decision. This means that you are compressing a few hundred years of social development into mere decades. While the United States is currently a young soul country, there is a large population of baby souls as well. Baby souls are still focused on learning lessons of basic physical plane survival, as well as the forming and building of society. Their motto is, do it the right way or not at all. For this reason, they can have a certain rigidity to them. From their perspective, following the rules allows them to survive. If they are religious at all, they tend to seek orthodoxy and more fundamentalist expressions of their religions. They also experience primal fear quite easily because they haven't yet experienced enough incarnations to be more comfortable on the physical plane. 
Young souls, as can be readily observed, often manipulate the fears of these baby souls for their own personal power and expansion. This is not to say, nor do we in any way imply, that all of those who voted for Donald Trump were baby souls. People of all soul ages voted for him for their own reasons. But there is no doubt that Donald Trump, a young king, manipulated the fears of many groups of baby souls to propel him to the presidency. While the 2016 election has often been framed as a reaction against the status quo, when looked at in these terms, it represented just the opposite. Whereas left-leaning liberals, many of whom are mature and old souls, with a smattering of idealistic young souls, perceive that change is not happening quickly enough, a great many conservative-leaning individuals feel that changes are happening far too quickly for them. Donald Trump is their effort however misguided, to put the brakes on change for a while so that they can catch their breaths. It is their attempt to toss a monkey wrench into the works so the engine seizes up and they can slow down. His protectionist stance on trade and isolationist stand on foreign affairs makes them feel like they will be protected. As it happens, they are erroneous in these suppositions, and they will discover this as time goes on. It is important to remember that for many of these people, freedom is the last thing they want, though they may pay all the proper lip service to the ideals of liberty. This is how autocrats seize power. They appeal to those who only want to feel safe. When they don't feel safe, they are going to make sure that no one else feels safe either, until they are taken care of in a way that makes them feel secure again. Ironically, their fear impels them to make electoral choices that result in their lives and livelihoods becoming even more precarious. Fear attracts its like. The kind of leadership that Trump represents is also the natural result of the steady transformation in the Republican Party, which since the 1960s has been moving in a more nationalistic, authoritarian direction. The Democratic Party shifted right as it took in more of the moderate Republicans who no longer found that direction tolerable and became far more corporate-friendly and conservative when compared to earlier Democratic and er even earlier Republican leaders. Since the Republicans absorbed members of the Democratic Party who opposed the civil rights movement of the 1960s, the Republicans have become the party that predominantly represents the interests of white nationalists, an ever-shrinking demographic. While the Republican Party has tried to shift its branding for the last decade, it has been less successful in regaining the presidency as they have been in state legislatures and in Congress. Trump is not an ideologue, but a pragmatist. He saw that the situation could be exploited for his own self-aggrandizement and did so. With a certain amount of cynicism, he played to the audience. We would caution you, however, to take his words seriously, as some of his followers have certainly done already. As your poet Maya Angelou said most wisely, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. From our perspective, we see this development facilitating a tremendous opportunity for healing wood, wounds that have festered for ages. Long before America was even dreamed of as a nation, the forces of racial, social, sexual, economic, cultural, national, religious, and political division seem very strong to you at the moment but only because they are being more fully exposed to your attention at this time. It seems especially shocking after the progressive promise of the nation's first black president. 
These divisions are the forces that were the dominant paradigm of the baby and young soul eras of your planet's history the last 15,000 plus years, where lessons are brought to bear by outward expansion and the imposition of power over one's territory and over others. The mature and old soul eras of your evolution will have as their dominant paradigm inward rather than outward expansion. Relationships and relationality, identity and community, and environmental stewardship and remediation will be the hallmarks of the future. That time is closer than you might realize. If you observe closely, you will see it already beginning to take shape. It might take quite a few decades or even centuries before long-standing issues and tensions between people can be resolved karmically on a local level, but it has very much begun. One of the results of having a two-party political system is that the system can and often does become quite polarized. The rise of Trump represents an extremely right-wing authoritarian swing of the pendulum in response to a moderately progressive move to left of center. The pressure of a Trump presidency will quite likely send the pendulum swinging in the other direction into an even more progressive direction. Just as an Obama presidency radicalized the right wing, a Trump presidency will likewise radicalize the left. And then there will be a reaction to that, and so on, the pendulum swinging until the polarity is balanced at last. That will look like nothing you can even imagine right now. This is a time full of possibilities and opportunities as well as dangerous threats to personal liberty. We perceive things differently than you do, you who are taking physical incarnations on earth. We were once where you are, but where we are now and where you will be is a different, equally valid way of perceiving reality. The biggest difference, of course, is that you experience time and we do not. You experience events sequentially, and so you see the universe as causal. We perceive events simultaneously and thus see it as a light and shimmering with purpose. Light always ends up where it intends to go, regardless of the obstacles in its path. If you knew the future, you would never act in a way contrary to it, because you would see the purpose behind all events. But then again, if you knew the future, you would not have free will. Without free will, evolution is not possible. So when we incarnate, when we enter the field of time, we temporarily trade our simultaneous perception of the all for the illusion of sequential time and causality. This is one of the challenges of translating our transmissions into the world of time. When we are asked to tell you the future, we will not do so because we see the purpose in it. We know where the light is going and would not influence anyone changing it. We see where this is going, but there are so many different paths to take to get there. Countless paths. That is why we speak to you in terms of probability rather than certainty. We have no certainties to offer you now. But we have given you tools to help you navigate to your highest probability outcome, to express your essence, to experience yourselves as love, to temporarily transcend polarity, to recognize and overcome your fear. From essence's perspective, events are meaningless. What is fascinating to essence is the response to events and the choices made as a result of them. It knows where it's going, but not how it gets there. 
because this is what allows essence to evolve. And to evolve all consciousness is, ultimately, the purpose of essence. How will you choose to respond to events? There is no right way or wrong way, or rather, you will find your own way. If you are experiencing great emotion as a response to these events, allow that. Process that. Express it if you wish. If you feel driven to some action, take that action. If you want to help protect the most vulnerable of you, then do so. If you want to get together into groups to raise and direct healing energy to people, institutions, or the planet itself, then do that. Do any of that. Do all of that. Whatever you choose, evolution will occur. You literally cannot choose wrong. You can, however, choose wisely. And true wisdom is knowing on all levels, all is one. We are one. Yes, one. Even with people you fundamentally disagree with on every level. We will remind you to be aware of the dynamic that when shame overwhelms capacity, it expresses itself as blame directed at others. Many of you are feeling a deep shame right now, as is often the case when the extent of the wounding is revealed. Watch for it. Let essence heal it. You are far more powerful than you could ever realize. When you combine your efforts and your energy with others, you are literally unstoppable. You are light. And nothing gets in the way of light when it's on the move. We remind you that the point of the particular curriculum you are studying on earth is unconditional love. This is not synonymous with unconditional acceptance, of course. Channel your shock, your anger, your outrage into constructive action in whatever way seems appropriate. Recognize and acknowledge your fear and displace it with essence. What would love do now? Is always a stimulating question to ask, and the responses it evokes make you even more powerful individually and collectively. Especially for older souls, unconditional love is, in itself, an action that affects the world around you. Boldly recognize and confront your own fear, help heal it in others, and displace it with the light of everything you are. Look closely into the mirrors you are offered, and you will be offered many in the coming days and weeks. Ask yourselves, how do we co-create societies that are inclusive, more equitable, allowing for freedom but protecting the youngest souls, the most vulnerable people, as well as the planet we depend on for life, and become all that you are in response to that question. We love you, and we are here.